Okay, I'm going to do this as efficiently as possible. Um, I do not memorize all of these ID names. <laughs> this is Ruthie and um, Jack's letter, born on the 2nd of March, 2015. Today is the 23rd of uh, March. Today they are three weeks old. And I'm going to try to quickly introduce them by um, ID name according to their collar colors, which I do not think that I have on the website. Um, and once again, it's unlikely with 13 puppies that I'll be able to memorize all of these names. Um, we have more boys than we do girls, of course. And these are beautiful, unique sable and brindles. Uh, a couple of black and whites, I think, but likely will silver upon maturity. I don't think there is a puppy in here that will stay black and white upon maturity. That's never a guarantee with any of our puppies, regardless of who the parents are. Um, oftentimes we'll have a litter where we might have a handful of them or a couple of them within the litter that stay black and white in, upon maturity. On the other hand, they have siblings within the same litter that will silver fairly early on. So um, you've got a mixture of genetics, obviously, with two different breeds. And all Old English Sheepdogs are born black and white. And therein they, and of course we all know that they do silver upon maturity. And the fading gene, silvering gene, is very strong in the standard poodle as well. Um, so there you have it. And like I said, it's not to say that we haven't had some that will turn black and white. I do find, although I'm not so sure with this one here. Um, let's see. You are blue, no, light blue and black. Teal and brown, whatever. Tarragon. This is the one we refer to as tarragon. I do find that the more white that they have on them, the more likely they will hold their darker color or their black. Okay. Um, so if any of them, now he does have very light, faint brown in there, which tells me that he'll likely silver upon maturity. Um, but I don't know to what extent. It could be a dark silver, such as our Chessie. She is a steel gray silver. She's out of our first litter back in 2011. Belongs to my daughter. Lives with her at college. All right, this one here is our brown collar. And again, I've got to look at my list. Uh, Mommy is anxious to come back in, so I need to, this is the one we call oregano background music is our old English sheepdogs. I just got done cleaning their box and playing with them and taking a video of them and now they hear my voice and it's not with them. Okay, so you can kind of see the brown markings. This one will likely be Brindle. Um, and I posted a photo of one of our puppies out of, I believe, Jesse and, uh, Jesse and Yogi uh, that turned Brindle. And that was just kind of sporadic, but the Brindle gene does even though Jessie doesn't show it, she obviously carries for it. And it's not something we can see in the registration because AKC does not acknowledge that marking as far as registering with those colors. All right, this one is a little bit stronger in showing the brindling. You can see the brown. That usually indicates that they will brindle. A um, little bit darker around the ears, which is kind of cool, kind of a little bit of a sign of sabling as well. And this is the black collared one. Don't you peel my book. And this is the one we call Chicory. He's one of our bigger boys. See, there's Chicory. And there's his facial markings. Who are we got over here? Uh, this is our red collared girl over here exploring. And they are getting close to the point where they're starting to investigate mom's food. Mom's still doing awesome. Now, now behave yourselves. Little sibling rivalry over there. Um, okay, this is the red collared girl, the one we call Angelica. So here's one of our girls. And again, I'm trying to get close enough to where you can kind of see the markings in their coat. So you can see where she's probably going to bring them. <laughs> Who's our sash cat over here? Oh, I love this. Can you, I, well, I hope you can in this camera, see the dark marking that goes right down his back. Again, probably going to be a brindle, but with some fascinating color variations in his coat. And uh, this is the green boy. You got poopy on you, buddy. You, you got poopy. No wonder you're being sassy. All right. And... He is, let's see, obviously a little bit more of a dominant personality. Um, doesn't mean he'll be mean. He's just going to be a little more, more dominant. All right, and he's the one we call Mustard. 
Yeah. Hot mustard. You're a hot boy. Okay. All right. Now, this was our little brown boy. Yeah, and our brown boy that I told you about earlier and our little pink girl, they're the smallest ones in the litter. She's also got some brindling. I'll try to get close. I know the lighting is very limited in here. We got tons of windows, but the sun just doesn't hit us right to give us really good natural lighting all the time. But those that have visited us know that we have plenty of windows in our nursery. Okay, so this is our little pink girl and she is sassafras and I have not okay there's sassafras's face most of their noses will probably turn completely black so even though they're pink now if you don't like the pink nose it's probably not gonna stay if you do like the pink nose sorry it's probably not gonna stay all right now here's one of our sable this is a girl and she let's see purple this is one a lot of people I think are cinnamon aren't you yes yeah, cinnamon all right, you can see her brown and little black edges. And um, there's her face. She doesn't have much color on her face, but on her one ear. And you can see, oh, mess up my back. See where her ear is black. All right, now this will lighten. Okay, a lot of these uh, colors will not hold as they are, but they're gonna be very, very fascinating blends of hues as they mature. Okay, I was hesitant all this time to breed Jack knowing he would produce something a little bit different than this typical dark silver and gray and white and black and white. But a couple of his offspring produced some beautiful, fascinating puppies and everybody seemed to respond so positively to them. We decided to give Jack a try and he has such awesome puppies with awesome temperaments anyway. So many people that have been following us since our Labradoodle and Golden Doodle days and our standard poodles uh, know our Jack <coughs> quite well. He will be with us for um, indefinitely. He will retire here with us. He's a good boy. Good boy. He's about 50 pounds. Standard poodle. All right. Very light, faint brown mixed in here, which will indicate either silver uh, upon maturity or maybe touches of brindle. And sometimes if it's faint like that, you won't see the brindling unless they're cut down. Uh, fairly close when they're groomed. And this is our blue and black guy. Uh, this is one we call cumin. Again, all of our ID names were spices for our baker's dozen. Hopefully I don't forget anybody because I didn't get a pen to check off as I went through them. This is our light blue collared boy. It's got a little bit more brown that you can see. Again, um, it kind of indicates that we will have a brindling pattern to his coat. And let's see, what are you? Light blue is sage. That's our red girl. She just really likes to explore. And our black collar boy, which I do believe we talked about him, didn't we? Um, black, 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 black. Yes, that's chicory. That's chicory. And let's see, who's chicory talking to? That's our little pink girl. Our two tiny ones, which are, I wouldn't say tiny, but definitely smaller in the litter. Oh, I don't think we've talked to you yet. Nope, this is our other sable. And this is the one that we call allspice. You can see his coloring. Again, this will change. We'll likely keep the dark points around his face. Dark silver, probably not black. Little dark edges on his ears will probably stay. That's usually what happens with a sable. Sable standard poodles will be born this color as well, but then they generally will fade to a lighter color on most of their body and then um, keep their dark points around maybe the base of their tail and around their ears and their nose. Oh, that's my dryer. I couldn't remember my washer. I couldn't imagine what that noise was. All right, let's see. Whoops, you guys, turn my page again. There is a little yellow girl in here somewhere. Oh, I think she's sleeping. Another one of our brindles. Okay, and she's the one we call Jasmine. They're so cute at this age. Sorry about the background music. She's got a beautiful face. Little Cleopatra eye there. Okay, we've talked to you, talked to you. Dark green, yeah. Uh, orange, I don't think we've talked to orange yet. Orange is, this is paprika. She's got a little dot on her face. Very cute markings. It was paprika. 
And once again, she does have some brown mixed in with her black, which will indicate early silvering or a little bit of a brindle pattern. Okay. Look at you. That's our dark green boy. Yep, that's mustard. I'm gonna count my puppies here. I don't have a barrier up over there and I know somebody was behind me. Okay, there's our little girl, Cinnamon. Right, I'm trying to look at collar colors and hope that I hit everybody. That's our yellow girl again. And that's our little poopy boy. Okay, brown collar and, whoops, wait a minute. No, I think we've got two different ones. This is gray. I'm sorry, the gray and brown look too close together. I might have to change that. Yep, I think I called you both the same one. <laughs> So we have uh, gray is basil. Okay, so this is basil, and he's a little bit darker. And this one is um, not tarragon. Yeah, I definitely have an explorer out there. Um, brown is oregano. So here's oregano. I do apologize for the confusion. Mr. Gray's got a dirty collar, and it looked brown to me. So, and they are both small, so I guess I got three small ones. And then sage, uh, not sage, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, shoop, I can't focus in, oh, gray's number one, that's why I'm not focusing in, okay. So there's our gray boy, and that's one we call basil. Basil, and where'd oregano go? There's oregano, right here. All right take a wide shot here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. I know somebody wandered out the door, but they must have come back. All right. There's our little puppies running around. I need to go get mom back in. Hopefully she hasn't run away from me. Yeah, let's go go find your mama. And we thank you very much for viewing this uh, letter. Again, this is Law Padoodle Canine Manor www.lawpdoodlek 9 k and the number 9 manor m a n o r dot com you can also email us at lpdk 10608 at gmail.com we will begin the selections on this litter as well as Blazy's litter born the week later uh, beginning the 2nd of April so pretty soon it's when our first visitor will come first person eligible to pick uh, don't know if we will have puppies available from either one of these litters until we complete the selection process and exhaust the list. A lot of the people on the list, uh, I know it's a big one, um, will likely not be choosing from this litter. And we are expecting one more litter in April uh, from Powder and Yogi. Or is it Powder and Gina? I have to check, double check which one we had her with. Um, and so uh, check with us on that litter. And once again, the availability will, will be determined based on how we work down the list at that time. And um, please email us again at lpdk10608 at gmail.com if you have any additional questions or would like to get a general idea of availability coming up. I really, it's hard to really say because I never, even myself doesn't, I don't know how the list is going to work out until we actually belong, uh, begin selections. And uh, that, at that time, you can kind of keep an eye on how things work out and um, watch it daily because it changes daily. And let us know if you're interested in securing a spot on that list so that we would contact you as soon as your name comes up. All right. So once again, thank you, and may God bless you. Bye-bye.